Hi everyone. So last week I asked if you would send me something that you wanted to learn about and an overwhelming number of students wanted to learn about reptiles or some of you wanted to learn about a specific reptile like a snake or a tortoise, but I kind of wrapped everything into one because um, it, it was a lot of different reptiles and we can kind of talk about them as a whole. So um, a reptiles are air breathing vertebrates covered in special skin and their skin is actually made up of scales, which are like bony plates or a combination of a bony plate and a scale kind of like fish. So they include crocodiles, snakes, alligators, lizards, turtles, and tortoises found in New Zealand. All regularly shed the outer layer of their skin. Their metabolism also depends on the temperature of the environment that they actually live in. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So Unlike birds and mammals like us human beings and cats and dogs, reptiles do not maintain a constant internal body temperature. So for human beings, we run at like 98.5, give or take a couple of degrees, meaning you could run a little bit hotter on average or a little bit cooler on average, but your body tries to stay at the same temperature all the time. It doesn't need help from you. We're known as what's known as warm blooded because our blood inside our bodies are warm and they help warm up our bodies but um, our reptile friends without fur or feathers for insulation they can't stay warm on a cold day and without sweat glands or the ability to pant they cannot cool off on a hot day so instead they move into the sun or into the shade as they feel their body is getting too cold or too hot. And during the cooler parts of the year, they become inactive. And what that means is they don't move a whole lot. So if we lived further north, they would kind of go into a hibernation, whereas they would find someplace safe and just kind of stop moving altogether because their bodies are getting way too cold. And because of their slow metabolism, that's what helps give them their energy when they eat, and heat-seeking behavior, reptiles are considered cold-blooded because they're unable to heat or cool their bodies on their own, unlike mammals and birds. So here is a picture of some um, reptiles that we are all familiar with, sunbathing. So what's kind of also pretty cool about a reptile is that temperature actually affects if they're going to be a boy or a girl when they hatch or are born. And that's something that doesn't happen for birds or mammals. So reptile reproduction also depends on temperature. And reproduction means if they're going to have a boy or a girl baby. And only boas and pythons give birth to live young. So only boas and pythons actually give birth to um, actual living baby snakes. Everybody else makes a nest and they lay their eggs. The young hatch days to months later, depending on what type of reptile we are talking about, but the soil temperature is critical during this time when they're in the nest. It determines whether they'll be a male or a female. Research has shown that if the eggs incubate below 81.86 degrees Fahrenheit, the hatchlings will be male. So if they're cooler, they'll be a male. So most of the eggs that are kind of closer to the bottom of the nest that are dug down deeper, especially for like sea turtles and others that dig, like some um, of our little gecko friends, they dig to make their nest. Those that are closer to the bottom of the nest are more likely to be male because it's cooler down there. Whereas eggs that incubate above 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which are warmer, are generally female. So those that are closer to the top of the nest that may be warmed, so the soil is warmed by the sun a little bit easier during the day, those most likely will be female. 
And sometimes a nest stays at a pretty constant temperature, which means the same the whole time. And that allows for it to all be boys or all be girls. But what happens a lot is the temperature fluctuates. That means it goes up or down. And that's how you get a mix of boys and girls. But unlike bird eggs, the shells on reptile eggs are really soft. And instead of having a beak to break through and crack the shell, reptiles have what's known as an egg tooth. And an egg tooth allows them to break the egg open. And some species, mom will actually come and help to break them out of their egg shells. So, as we mentioned, some snakes such as boas, and actually I forgot to mention rattlesnakes and garter snakes and pythons, they actually give birth to live young. So that means the baby snake develops inside their mom's tummy and they're born just like actually already being a snake. They don't have an egg, but they actually come out in what's called kind of like a gooey bag and they still need their egg tooth to pop that gooey bag but they're able to wiggle free almost instantly unlike their counterparts that it takes them a little while to actually break open their egg and be able to wiggle free so young reptiles can actually glide walk and swim within hours of their birth it's a way that they are able to survive and a lot of reptiles don't really take care of their young once they're born it's kind of like okay you're good to go go do your own thing however um a friend that we have here in florida the alligator which is a very fierce looking reptile is actually a very fierce mother as well. She actually takes care of her hatchlings um, just like birds will. And they actually have a, a remarkable degree of parent parental care and investment in their young, which like I said, isn't really seen except for in birds and a few other select animals. They are there to guide their babies out of their incubation. So they help them out of their eggs as safely as possible. And then they escort them as quickly as possible down to the water. And you'll see a picture down at the bottom where the baby alligator is inside the mother's mouth. She's not trying to eat him. She's actually guiding him to safety and the safest place she has for him is inside her mouth. So she will scoop them up in the, her mouth and take them wherever she needs to. So when they're first born, they try to get them down to the water and guide them to the water. But once they are, all the babies have been born and they are at the water, the young alligators tend, tend, excuse me, tend to stay really close to their mom and they form a little social group with their hatchlings known as a pod. And you can see a picture of the pod on the other side of the page with all the babies kind of either swimming around mom or sitting on mom's head. These are ways that they are able to be protected. So when her young are in distress, meaning they're upset or in trouble, they let out a really squeaky call that gets her attention and she will come right away to help protect them or help them in whatever they need. Now this period of protection varies. It kind of depends on one mom to the next, but for most, an alligator provides protection only a few months or up to one year and then she's going to have more babies that she needs to protect and she lets those first set of babies go do their own thing. So reptiles use a variety of methods to defend themselves from dangerous situations such as avoidance so they try to get away from it or they camouflage themselves like the chameleon or they hiss and bite like snakes and I do have a picture of a chameleon showing multiple colors because they are able to change themselves to camouflage with their background to hide and then there is a snake that is most likely hissing and getting ready to bite. So 
Reptiles first appeared in the fossil records 315 million years ago, and they were the dominant animal during the Mesozoic era. And what that means is being a dominant animal means you, you are the main animal. There are, you were big, they were in control, and there were a lot of them. And this lasted for roughly 270 million years until the extinction of the dinosaurs. So they were kind of the top species there for a very long time. So I have an experiment for you guys, and it's an egg and vinegar experiment. It is a pretty easy experiment to do if you choose to do it. And all you have to do is fill a cup up with vinegar and place a chicken egg inside the cup. You will notice eventually that it'll start to bubble, but it doesn't happen right away. I would recommend leaving the egg in the cup for 24 to 48 hours. And the reason I want you guys to see this is not only will this egg transform, but you'll also, if you watch it carefully and check in on it regularly, you'll get to see the process of the eggshell from being hard and a nice protection for the chicks that are inside to becoming soft, just like a reptile egg. Now, a reptile egg doesn't give a lot of protection to those babies. That's why it's important that the mothers protect them and make sure they hatch or hide them really well, like sea turtles try to do. So, um, and that soft shell also allows them to feel the temperature like we talked about. But I want you to see how that hard protection changes into a soft shell and then the egg will morph into something new. So you're always welcome to send pictures and tell Miss Bender what happens to your egg if you would like. So I hope you enjoyed our talk about reptiles. I would like you to head on over and take a two question quiz. It's not really a um, huge quiz like we've done in the past and I say huge but most of the quizzes have been five or six questions. This one's only two questions and I would just like to hear from you. So have a good one. Bye.